McGriddle, and welcome back to Ascendant Hearts. We are carrying on on our adventure, and we're we're going to the. Uh, I believe yes, we are on our way again back to the Sacred Spring. So the next morning, we meet up by the fountain. Does everyone know the plan? While you fight the guardians, I sneak past the Sacred Spring and take a sample of the water. I hold up the small glass container she gave me since she said it won't work if I tried to shove water into my inventory on its own. And I heal the two of you so you don't die. Once we have the water, we hightail it out of there. No heroics. Right. In their current state, the guardians are too dangerous to try to defeat. But we should also be looking for any sign of the monsters that attack the town. Sounds like we're ready. Follow me. Alright, okay. As I leave the way out of town, the back of my neck prickles as though someone is watching me. I look over my shoulder. Ooh, what was that? Huh? He left so quickly I didn't get a good look. But wasn't that the guildmaster? Was he watching us? Okay, Mr. Guildmaster, why? Hayato, is something wrong? No, sorry, coming. It must have been my imagination. The guildmaster wouldn't have any reason to spy on us. He was probably just passing by. I gave myself a shake and hurried to catch up with the others. Excuse me. Our journey back at the Sacred Spring is quick. My heart pounds and I wipe my sweaty hands on my pants. No matter how safe Shigori claims it is, the memory of our deaths make me shudder. Ready, everyone? Yeah. Yep. Ready to take on some rocky bitches. Now, we fly into action according to our plan. Shiori bombards the attacking guardians with one elemental spell after another. Fire, ice, and lightning fill the air as I run forward. Aiko lingers behind her out of the guardian's reach. She doesn't fight with physical attacks, but with light-based magic. One of them evades a string of fireballs and rams me with his massive shoulder. I gasp and stumble from the pain. Cure! A refreshing coolness settles over me. The pain vanishes and my skin knits back together. I give Aiko a grateful smile and continue forward. The guardians are intent on not letting us pass. However, since Aiko heals me every time they attack and they can't ignore her and Shiori's attacks entirely, they can't stop me. I scramble between the enraged monsters and crouch by the side of the pool. Nice. So there's no sign of the other good monsters. I doubt they live here. Maybe their incursions are what have the guardian is so riled. One slams into me from behind and I nearly topple into the water. Right, this is no time to let my mind wander. Eventually one will get hit in a hit or two against Aiko and then we'll all be in trouble. I retrieve the container from my inventory and fill it with water. It sure looks like regular hot water to me, but I'm no expert. I return it to my inventory and stand. I've got it! Go! She raises her hands. A wall of ice forms behind me and I block the guardians as if flee from the sacred spring. Their enraged cries follow us as we race away from the mountains. Nice! Yes! We did it! We succeeded! Yay! Mission success! I think... We lost them. Let's never do anything like that again. Cure. Her healing spell eases, eases the stitch in my side, but it can't relieve our exhaustion. We stand in silence for a few minutes, catching our breath. Phew. Well, at least we got the water right. I take it from my inventory and hold it up in triumph. Think it'll get, tell us anything important? There's only one way to find out. Let's go see Dr. Takizawa. She starts to walk away and I follow, but a startled cry from Aiko makes us stop. Dr. Takizawa? The mad scientist? Oh. Dr. Takizawa is not a mad scientist. Yes, he is. His research has greatly aided our technological advances. At what cost? What are you implying? Before this can explode into an outright, outright fight, and a fight between angry mages is not something I want to witness, I hold out my hands. Calm down. Don't tell me to calm down. Tell her to stop insulting Dr. Takizawa. I don't want anything to do with the mad scientist. He's not mad. Both of you, just calm down a minute. They continue to glare at each other, but at least they stop yelling. 
After a moment, they both give me expectant looks. I take a breath. I'll need to approach this very carefully to avoid making either of them angry with me. Aiko, why do you say Dr. Takizawa is mad? Have you ever seen him? He's crazy! He's always running dangerous experiments and shouting how he'll do things for science! What does that say to you? Yep, that sure sounds like a mad scientist to me. Pretty much a textbook example of one. But from the look on Shiori's face, I better not say so out loud. Shiori, what do you think? Dr. Takizawa is eccentric and devoted to his work, but there's no proof he's done anything immoral or unnecessarily dangerous. More importantly, he's the only person who can give us a definite answer on whether the water from the sacred spring is regular water or something special. Alright. It can't hurt to pay him a visit. What? You're going to trust her word? Even though she's... I'm what? If you have something to say about me, say it to my face. Calm down, Aiko. Is there any reason to believe Dr. Takizawa will hurt us? Have there been unexplained deaths around him? Well, no. Mysterious disappearances? No. People who visit his lab and come out as werewolves or something? Fine, you, you made your point, but I still think getting mixed up with a mad scientist is dangerous. He's perfectly sane. We're not getting mixed up with him. We'll fit us into his lab, ask him to analyze the water, and leave. Fair enough? Well, alright. Who knows? Maybe he's just one of those guys who's really strange but also brilliant like Nikola Tesla. Okay. Alright. Ooh! Uh, never mind. Let's just go see Dr. Takizawa. Okay. Alright. Nikola Tesla. Well, here we are. If when Shiro led us through the field to the small building, I expected the sort of setup I'd see back home. But this? This place screams mad scientist lab. Dr. Takizawa, are you here? Aiko looks as nervous as I feel as we regard the strange room and what appears to be several in-progress experiments, but Shiori barely gives it a second glance. Dr. Takizawa? I guess he's not here. Let's go home. Uh... Oh, okay. Thanks. Thanks for telling me that Lee Squad's playing Player Unknown Battlegrounds. I wish I could play too. Can't though. Okay, at least we tried. Aiko and I meet glances and nod. We both turn toward the door, but Shiori glares at us. We're not leaving yet. Dr. Takizawa! As even as she steps forward toward a door that must lead deeper into the facility, Aiko backs up towards the exit. She looks around as though she expects the scientist to spring from the shadows at any moment and capture us. Come to think of it, that might be a valid concern. Oh. From somewhere beyond the door, a loud screech rings out. I jump and so does Aiko. She whirls around and stumbles on the closest lab table. A beaker filled with an unknown liquid topples and crashes to the floor. Watch out! Eek! Ah. Oh. oh, that was... That was a... Wow. Okay. Green fire flares up from everywhere the liquid touched. Thankfully, none of it landed on Aiko, but it forms a barrier between us. Are you okay? I, I think so, but I'd really like to return to town now. We can't leave the lab like this. The whole place could catch on fire. Any ideas? She raises her hands and ice crystals fly towards the fire. They melt the moment they approach the flames. Wow, this stuff is powerful. Thanks for that insight. Hey, I was trying to help. I know Shiori really doesn't want to help, but I can't help but sympathize with Aiko. She doesn't trust her to begin with, and she didn't want to come to the lab, and now this has happened. If a mad scientist experiment exploded next to my feet, I'd be pretty annoyed. Oh my, what have you done? Huh? Who? The things I go through. Stand back! Ah! Whoa! Whoa! He's pretty wild looking. That's better. The flames are gone. As is the liquid they come, came from, only the glass fragments of the beaker can remain on the floor. Aiko gives them a wide berth as she hurries to stand closer to me. 
I tried to give her a reassuring smile, but it's made more difficult by the fact that we've been joined by someone I can only assume is the mad scientist. Thank you, Dr. Takizawa. Indeed, you young lady. Do you have any idea how much you've set back my work? That was part of a vital experiment. Uh, I'm sorry. Sorry? Bah. Do you think sorry can undo this damage? My experiment. My precious experiment! I'm gonna stand up for Echo. It was an accident, sir. Eh? Accident? Then you didn't come here just to sabotage my experiments? Um, no. Does this sort of thing happen to him often? Hmm. Are you sure? I'm positive. You should know I wouldn't bring saboteurs here, Doctor. True. You always have shown me support. He glances at Aiko. In that case, I accept your apology, young lady. Oh, okay. What sort of experiment was it? Mm. Oh, distilled monster blood mixed with the region in order to, for me to learn more about its composition and chemical structure. Monster blood? Are you trying to learn more about the attacks on the town? That's a good idea. This came from regular monsters, though. The ones called whammers, in fact. I have a few in the downstairs laboratory if you want to like to learn more about my experiments. Aiko Wilts. She seems about as unhappy as I feel at the thought of someone conducting experiments on those cute little whammers. Sir, you are an abomination and an absolutely terrible person. Why are you experimenting on whammers? Why? Why experiment on anything, my boy? For science! Oh, wow, wow, wow. She looks like she might cry for my part. I just stare at Dr. Takizawa. I can't believe I'm talking to someone who ironically shouts for science. Yep. Experiments on animals for science. That's... A subject I'm not going to talk about. <clears throat> we aren't here to discuss whammers. Oh yes, you came to sabotage my experiments. No. Has my brilliance been recognized to such a degree that I am about to receive an award and a grant? And perhaps a larger research facility? No. You're not here to sue me, are you? <laughs> oh my gosh. You, you really- why? Sue? They have lawyers here? Come on, Dr. Takazawa, you know how much it costs to hire a lawyer. Mm. But I've never seen this young man before. He looks like a lawyer to me. But I'm carrying a sword. So? Do lawyers usually carry swords? Of course they do. They're adventurers, after all. Don't mind him, doctor. He has an amnesia. Oh ho, you do. If I could just run a few tests, young man. Ah, no, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. Becoming a test subject is not on my list of things to do today. If they say lawyers are adventurers who carry swords, fine. I believe them. Not only can I vouch for him, but I also promise we're not here to sue you. Then why are you here? We would like you to analyze a water sample from the sacred spring. She nods to me and I retrieve the precious container from my inventory. I hold it out to the scientist who accepts it with a gleeful expression. The sacred spring. How many years have I yearned to study it, yet those fools always stood in my way. Uh, I really hope we haven't broken any rules of religion by turning over the water sample. Now, at last, I will show them all. Right. Well, we're interested in knowing if the water has any special properties. I shall test it immediately, however, it will take time to properly analyze the results. Could you return tomorrow? Of course, thank you. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. The water of the sacred spring in my hands at last. As we leave the laboratory, I can't help but wonder if what we did is really such a good thing. You know, I'm starting to think that too. Hey. See? He's not a mad scientist. You're joking, right? Huh? I was about to ask if he played up the mad scientist persona on purpose. No, that's his normal personality. Gods help us. You're just like everyone else, so quick to judge, Dr. Takizawa. I stare at her. 
The man embodies nearly every mad scientist trope I can think of. So, he is a mad scientist. Ugh. Whatever, let's get back to town. And let's never return again. We have to go back tomorrow. Aw, oh, I was hoping you'd forget about that. No, I'm, I'm sorry, Aiko. I can't. When we reach the inn, we sit down to eat at a table together. That doesn't surprise me. After all, it was a minor enough argument. What does surprise me is when Aiko joins us. Hey, what are you doing here? Eating dinner with you? Is that a problem? Well, I lean close to Shiori so I can whisper in her ear. If she's making an effort to get along with you, can't you at least do the same? Ugh, fine. We eat together in tense silence for a few minutes, but then Shiori looks up with a smile. You know, I think we are really onto something here. The flower from the sacred spring was a great lead. What could it be though? I bet the dark wolves stop at the sacred spring for some reason. That's what he has the guardian so, so upset. It must have something to do with the water. As we eat, I watch Aiko. Despite her earlier amusement, she now looks distinctly unhappy. Doesn't she want to learn more about the dark wolves? Tomorrow we'll go see Dr. Takizawa again. Maybe his anal analysis of the water will point us toward the monster's origin. Is that really what you want? What? Of course it is. Why? We want to stop the attacks, of course. Stop them? If we find the source of the dark wolves, we might be able to figure out why they're attacking the town. And then we can stop them forever. Are you sure that's a good idea? Huh? Do you want to live in constant fear of monsters? No. Then what's the problem? It won't be easy trying to stop the dark wolves. It could lead to a big quest. Even a story quest. Yeah, I, I thought about that when we were on our way to the lab. This is probably the start of a story quest. A story quest? Could someone please explain for the guy with amnesia? I mean, I know what a story quest is. I mean, I know what a story quest would be if I was playing a game, but this is real life. Quests to kill monsters or retrieve items are one thing, but surely something like this can't be classified as a quest. A story quest is a major undertaking that could change the world. But, but no one gave us this quest. People don't give you story quests. Then how is it a quest? What would you call it? Uh, uh. Okay, now that I think about it, quest is as good a term as any for a mission to stop the monster attacks. But that isn't the problem here. Why story though? This isn't a story. Strange. What? Your amnesia seems to have targeted everything that has to do with adventuring, even slang. Slang? These, words, these world shape-shifting events became known as history quests because they were important parts of history. Over time, people shortened it to story quest until it became the more common term. You must be joking. Does it matter? No, I guess not, but why are you so worried about it? I'm not sure if our party is ready for a story quest. Well, if we get in over our heads, we'll rethink things, right? Something else is clearly bothering her. She stares down at the table, but from time to time, her gaze towards her gaze goes towards Shiori. Wait, is this going where I think it is? Why don't you come out and say it then, or are you too afraid? All at once, the pleasant atmosphere around her table vanishes, replaced by tension. I look at Shiori and then I, at Aiko. What's going on? Should I be afraid? You wouldn't believe me if I said no. Um, go on. She stands up and glares at Aiko. Say it. Traitors are 90% more likely to show up in story quests than in any other type of quest. What? In other words, she doesn't want to do this because she's afraid I'll murder the two of you. Oh, come on, that's ridiculous. And why would a story quest make it more likely anyway? Who would betray the party over fetch quest? No, it has to be something serious. That's when the agent of the Empire shows her hand. What Empire? There's usually an evil Empire. Is there one now? No. See? The secret prophet of the evil religion reveals her identity. I thought the gods were benevolent. Okay, well, she still could be working for the monsters. 
Yeah, I'm sure the Dark Wolves are fantastic employers. You can tell by the way they attack without mercy. You could be part monster. Now even she sounds uncertain. This is ridiculous. Look, we're investigating the monsters. If you don't want to, fine, leave. What? You're the one who asked to join our party. We didn't ask you. You were practically begging for a healer. Begging for you? Ha! Don't make me laugh. I'll say it again. Leave. If you don't like being in our party, no one's forcing you to stay. Is antagonizing our healer really a good idea? It's okay, Hayato. I don't mind. She's proving my point, after all. What? Who is more likely to try and kick out other party members that the, than the traitor? Oh, you little- Whoa. Okay, calm down, Shiori. Seriously. You have a problem. For a moment, I'm concerned Shiori will explode. Instead, she falls silent and turns away from her table. Quick strides carry her to the inn door. Wait, Shiori! Too late. She bursts out of the inn without a backward glance. Ugh. I return my attention to Aiko now that the argument is over. She looks unhappy and subdued once again. It's a struggle, but I try to see things from her point of view. Even though the rumors about Shiori seem ridiculous to me, Aiko honestly believes them in her mind. Shiori is a loose cannon, someone who could turn on us at any minute. Ah. But then, why place yourself in a situation where they'd be forced to go on quests together? Why did you join our party? I wanted to help you. When we first met, you said you didn't want to be an adventurer. Then there's Shiori. You don't trust her at all, so why become an adventurer to join her party? I mean, you don't have to tell me if you don't want to. I guess she doesn't want to talk about it. I try to think of a way to steer the conversation onto another topic, but before I can, I close sighs and meets my gaze. Do you know how death works for adventurers? I know the basics. If you're battling for a quest or experience and whatever you're fighting feels the same way, both of you will respond after death. But if one of you really wants to kill the other, whoever dies in the battle dies for real, right? Yes. That's why the monsters that attack the town are so dangerous. Enemies like that show up during story quests. One of the common signs you're on a story quest is when a party member dies for real. I guess that makes sense. I'm that party member. What? It must be. Who was most likely to die to show how serious things are? The quiet healer, right? That's it. She's crazy. Absolutely crazy. That doesn't make any sense. Yes, it does. No, it doesn't. People don't die in quests for the sake of drama. Sure they do. No! Okay. No, that's ridiculous. I can't believe we're having this conversation. Why? Because it's ridiculous. You're not going to die just so we know things are serious. How do you know that? Things don't work that way. Yes, they do. We're going in circles, and I don't think my arguments have made her feel any better. But you're a healer. It'll take quite a lot to kill you. It's not as tough as you might think. Healing magic is an instant, you know? It's not. When she healed me during battle, it certainly worked fast. Everything takes time. The worse injury, the longer it takes for healing magic to work. Don't forget that. I need to have enough mana to use spells, too. And what if the attack knocked me out? I can't heal myself if I'm unconscious. I guess... Since I decided to become an adventurer, though, I've been practicing. Wait. Practicing what? Enduring pain. Jesus, Aiko. What? What are you making such a scary face for? You're practicing how to endure pain? That sounds dangerous. Oh, it's not like I hurt myself intentionally, but if I do get hurt a little bit, I won't heal myself. Mm -hmm. Some healers use the magic for everything. Scrapes, bruises, stub toes, and then when they take a real injury in battle, the pain shocks them so much they can't concentrate well enough to heal themselves. Really? Yikes. So don't overestimate my powers. I'll try not to, but I really don't know a lot about how healing magic works. Do you want a demonstration? That also sounds dangerous. 
Don't worry, a few days ago I accidentally scratched myself pretty badly. It's mostly healed now, but I can use my magic to heal the rest of the way and walk you through the process. I shrug. Alright, why not? Okay. She stands up. Follow me. I don't know why a healing demonstration has to be done in private, but then again, the inn's another... The inn's other guests might not appreciate seeing a wound heal while they're trying to eat. I get up and follow Aiko out of the common area. Alright, for now, we're not gonna go... We're not going to do the healing demonstration just yet. I am going to leave this episode here. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, please hit that button down below. And go into the description and click on the link to my friend Michael's channel. Go check out his channel. He does some pretty amazing stuff over there. And he's an all-around great guy. Go check him out. Show him some love. Go show him some support. And thank you so much for watching. Like always, I will catch you all in the next video. Stay awesome. Bye.